Welcome back for game three of the day. Another chapter in CLG versus TSM, where both teams had these mid-split identity crises. And as they try and find their footing crumbs, I think the place I look first is the jungle. An underperforming member on either team was Spica and Wiggly. I think current. it's no surprise that Wiggly and Spica aren't having the greatest of splits. You can see whether it's downing gold or not a very high kill and assist at 15. It's very important for the jungle role to be really involved. And obviously the laning, the laners also affect how well the junglers can perform. But we can pinpoint individual misplays that both these players are making, whether it's going off on their own and, or engaging too early or dying in places that there is vision around. There's just things that you'd want to see these players do better individually before we can start to wonder what's going on in the lanes because that's a great gank on the, on the Kog'Maw, right? You're, you're being able to punish him. This is fantastic, but they don't actually end up winning the game. There's no priority and objective. So Wiggly does a good job in getting this done, but if it doesn't get you a win, you got to change your priorities. Yeah, I think uh, there's been a number of, of issues with both both teams, um, especially for Spica. The, the laners feel pretty good around him. It's about working better with them. Wiggly has problems in uh, the later stage of the game. You know, he, he dove in there uh, in, in that uh, Immortals game and got himself killed going too far ahead of the rest of his team. So I think both players need to step up a little bit. Spica had some really great games in that kind of first third, second start of the second third of the split. I was going to say, like, weeks three and yeah. four were yeah, real solid. Yeah, he was solid. looking really good. So I think they need to get back to enabling him because that's kind of what they started to do where they were playing a little bit more around Spica, and I'd love to see that again. Yeah, I just just to, just to put some more numbers to what you're saying there, Mark, even more recently in their win versus 100 Thieves, Spica scoreline 0-5-3. So just not finding a way to be effective and involved throughout the game, a, akin to that Lee Sin performance that I think jumps out in a lot of people's minds from early on where he absolutely popped off. And so it just kind of feels like we're waiting for TSM to choose ultimately how they want to play. They keep waffling behind which of their members are they going to index behind. You know, on top of all of that, if we look over at the side of CLG, again, Crumbs, you called out that it's a lot of individual performances that we're looking at. We're not even looking at them as a team holistically quite at this moment. And I want to talk bot lane. So, probably maybe get in here and help us understand what's going on. I, I, don't, I don't know if I can tell you what's going <laughs> on. I see a lot of these numbers, and they look mighty low. Yeah, I think... Uh for the 6A side, they have a lot of actual jungle proximity. Wiggly does go down bot lane a lot. Um, and he's been doing better about getting uh, lane advantages. Uh, so he's, he's, he's actually looks like he's doing pretty good, but they still don't make the important plays in the game. Uh, and I think that's one of the big issues that, that they've been having is, is more actual playmaking. Yeah, I've been really upset with their decision making. Uh, this was a game, and you can see the gold lead. It's not even a 200 gold lead. And CLG actually sees this dive coming, and Stixay decides to stay here. Uh, we see Wiggly going on the other side of the map. Pubelter's fine to stay mid, but did you see any summoners go out? Did you see any abilities go out? Like, no. We saw nothing. What we just saw was CLG knowing a dive is happening. They decide to trade. And set goes to top side. They get a Gromp and a Pink Ward, and they lose over 600 gold in the bot lane. I mean, just throw your Bartle, throw your Zaya ult, like make them use more resources. Because when 100 Thieves dives bot like that, they lose one wave of mid farm. That's the only cost that they had to spend to make that work. They use, yeah. oh, okay, sorry, they and, use an exhaust as well. Yeah. But they and, didn't have to use Ash Arrow or like any of these ultimates. Like, that was so easy. Like, nothing is going to stop 100 Thieves from doing it again if CLG doesn't want to fight back or properly respond. You know, I would have been happy with them for defending that bot lane and not giving up so much, but they decided to trade or something if it, they didn't get anything. Yeah, those stats I also I saw confused me because I remember I just looked them up right now. Uh, CSD at 15, 6 is negative uh, 5.8. Uh, he also has yeah. some of the lowest kills and assists at 15 despite being second highest in jungle proximity. So those are the stats I was looking for. He he is not getting involved at all in the actual gameplay with his team. Uh, that's to clarify yeah. some of those. We want CLG to step it up individually and be a little bit more on the same page, or at least then they can focus on being on the same page. For TSM, it's it's about refining and defining that identity. We want to see them pick who they're playing through, and we want Speaker to step up to that. The players are loaded up and ready to go. Let's send it over to the casters for the game.
Thank you very much, and welcome back to the cast. Yes, CLG versus TSM, a long-standing rivalry and formerly a battle between the top two teams who date <laughs> back to 2011, 2012, and so on. Both these teams have championships under their belts right now. It is a battle between likely, honestly, first round playoff opponents. TSM sitting around third, CLG sitting around sixth. This could very well be a battle we see very, very soon in the postseason as well. TSM have been getting the better of this split so far, though. Yeah, for sure. I mean, last time around, we, we had the matchup even in Rivalry Week, and TSM took that one as well. Since then, they made some changes, you know, treats into the bottom lane. I think he's looked really good for TSM, uh, moving up from their Academy roster, performing quite well uh, with double lifts. So we'll see how well they can navigate the ganks this time around, because that was one of the big things I remember from casting the first one. Wiggly, he cleared a ward and then still got off a successful gank heading towards bottom side like two seconds later, um, even with TSM knowing and having vision. Um, let's see if they can track the enemy jungle a little bit better this time around. Pretty standard ban so far. Again, the Aphelios away uh, from double lift and TSM. Um, do you see a lot more of the uh, flex picks being targeted here second rounds with set and volley too? Absolutely the case right there. Of course, we're expecting TSM to have an early game lead overall. If you look at like player goal differences, it's, you know, you rank them across the 10 players in this game. It's TSM, 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 TSM. Okay, Pope lanes pretty well. And that's kind of the way the numbers shake out right now. So we'll see if CLG can step up to the early game. These teams are only three games apart in the standings. If the last couple weeks go well, I mean, CLG could pass them. That is possible, right? 10 and 8 is the highest possible record for CLG. That, that is a possibility if they can play it really well. We're seeing another Zaya ban. There's another champ. We are seeing uh, increase in relevance in the meta. Of course, we've seen so many Varus bans that that champ is gone. And so some hyper carries are showing up a bit more. Zaya being the sort of second one behind Aphelios that we see most mm. often as Ash is instantly locked in for CLG. Zaya, of course, pretty solid into Ash. You just ult the arrow, and you still got some tools in the kit. Exactly. Uh, it's the ult and the arrow, plus the, the feathers and lanes. That's where Zaya's getting played most, is is a lot into the Ash matchups. Um, but there, there have been a couple as well in LCK, in LPL, into, you know, Ezreal, and even the Misfortune as uh, on top of it. But they are keeping it away from double lift, kind of pushing him towards the Ezreal, which he does not have uh, quite... He doesn't have very many plays on the champion, actually. Yeah, first of summer. He's actually he got a really, really wide champion pool. Double of, like you mentioned earlier, Bang has played exactly three champions, counting uh -huh. the one of Senna. Uh, Double of is like a good nine champs played so far this split. This is number nine right there. And as Karma, of course, Karma is flexible. Don't get me wrong. But if this is bot lane, you have a lot of pushing and a lot of poke <clears throat> and a lot of turret pressure. Yeah, it's also one of TSM's most banned champions. So they have really stayed away from the Ezreal in, in recent memory. Now, over his career, obviously, Doublelift has had a lot of plays on the champion. He has a All-Stars highlight clip where he gets a pentakill with Ezreal. Um, so I'm sure he still has the fingers for it. On the other side, for CLG, though, they get Wiggly, Graves, very safe um, jungler here to be backed up by Galio. Most players like playing Graves, trying to abuse your early range advantage and a lot of scuttle crab fights, a lot of uh, you know aggressive moves looking to harass their opponents either taking phase rush and then having summoner spell ignite yeah. uh, a lot of the time. Or even I've seen a couple, you know, cleanses and stuff if you're facing sure. crazy CC. There's a lot I want to focus on on the picks so far because we're seeing some stylistic moves here for the squad. So for Wiggly, outside of one Nidalee game and now his second Graves game, this man has been on tank duty pretty much full time. He has, generally speaking, like really low gold differences. He is there to try to be like the facilitator for the team but he has incredibly, incredibly low gold share in the late game. He kind of donates it all to Stixay and Pobelter, and it's up to those two to carry. As we just saw Dardock on Dignitas a couple games ago, uh, you really want to see Graves take a lot of the farm, get a level lead over the opposing jungler, and be one of the uh, ma major factors in team fights late game. So it will be a, a, a kind of a new style or a different style for most of Wiggly's games. On the other side, Broken Blade is saying, yes, I am going to be on tank duty. Let us play around double from treats. If I'm going to diagnose TSM, I want to see that style. I want to see Broken Blade on Orn duty. Let him go do that and play around bot lane. So, so interesting for Sealy to make a difference. And TSM, I like this. Yeah, th this is what we've been talking about uh, this leak weeding up in a lot of the podcasts too, is kind yeah. of urging Broken Blade more towards conservative play style, whether it's tanks or, or safer play. He did have the Wukong game yesterday, um, had a pretty good matchup there and was able to have a really good performance. 
I think he's had some of his best games overall, though, uh, on tanks and Orn and Poppy specifically. So happy to see him on that. They do wisely ban out the Camille. They don't want to let Ruin have a split pushing option. They also don't want to let the Galio Camille combination go through. Uh, there are still other split pushing options you can take if you wanted to open that up. Uh, oh, and they are. And, and uh, Nar got some recent buffs. One of the ones most recently in the patch was a bunch of the extra attack speed in the mini form when you get your hop off. And you can try and use that to whittle down Orn. You harass him after uh, trying to avoid the combo. It's kind of hard for, yep. Nar, or, uh, for Orn to get his, his full brittle proc combo off on Nar because of the evasiveness uh, and the extra speed that you get. So interesting situations here. I want to see how well the Nar goes for Ruin. He plays mostly lane dominant characters. One Orn, one Malphite, otherwise a lot of fighters. Even things like Cannon. So Nar is more of Ruin still going his way. I don't know if you can really gank for Nar into Orn overall. So I'm not sure we're going to see pressure top lane, but Migley or Wiggly might see something else to do on other lanes. It will be fun to watch that matchup. Braum rounds out the lineup to get some more front line. I mean, CLG have good engage. They've got Nar, Braum, Galio. That's solid. They've got back line with Ash Graves. Only difficulty is armor stacking it. for your front line yeah. is going to be effective as Cassiopeia rounds out a team fight comp for TSM. I love this into Galio. Wanted to see it more. Uh, Bjergsen as well has been, to me, the best performer on the entire team for TSM. Now he's got the power in his hands. And Galio, you can really abuse that matchup. Uh, the poisons, the miasma is really good at stopping um, any sort of the opportunities to create plays for him within the mid lane. But CLG's comp is built around them trying to play off of Wiggly moving around through the jungle. You know, you try and use your uh, Graves matchup. It's pretty easy for Graves to try and dodge Jarvan EQs. Galio, classic. Try and get that ultimate down on him early to back up those invades. Ash Brahm on the bottom side even allows you to go for level one invades. So that's what I want to see from CLG. They need to use this champ select from the very beginning to get early wards down deep into the jungle, maybe even go for a steal away on one of the buffs and, and try and use that to snowball their early game plan ahead. All right, well, early game going to be really important, of course. Loading into the ref very soon here as CLG and TSM do battle. Counter Logic Gaming. They are trying to hold on to their upper bracket berth in playoffs. They have team uh, opponents, teams right behind them looking to steal that spot away, drop them into the lower bracket. TSM, of course, sadly for them, we just saw TL win. They've still got a lot of work to cut out for them. Two and a half games behind a playoff bye with five to play. It can be done, but it's going to be difficult. A win against CLG, of course, is a step towards that. We are on the rift. Let's see how it goes. Yeah, TSM have a lot of good scaling options. Cassiopeia obviously is going to be a monster. Uh, should have a pretty pretty good lane as well as being able to get a death cap upgrade later on from Broken Blade if they make it that far. So you see TSM playing defensively. Uh, they are warding already and watching the openings for that level one that I was trying to urge CLG to go for. They even go as far as to ward red and blue for themselves uh, as they're really worried about it. And Wiggly going to start on the blue side. Still does have the option to go for it, but the early alert systems, I think, good for TSM. Try and avoid any of these scenarios. And with Jarvan starting red, you can even have those super cheesy, like level two, you, you risk a lot when you do this against the Graves, because Graves can punish you heavily by stealing away camps and invading you afterwards. But uh, it does have the option there where you have CC at level two, kind of rare for uh, most jungle champions. Uh, really quickly, red buff technically killed faster by the Jarvan. Negative armor on red buff makes that pretty easy. Gray's finishing up blue and then going on to Gromp in a second. Shouldn't be too far behind, but really, really I good. Early harass from Bjergsen. Pope flashes in case there is a flash auto. He wouldn't have lived otherwise. Potion felt a little bit late. Gives himself the thumbs down. That is immediate lane kingdom for TSM's Bjergsen. Yeah, that's why I champs like that. I was like, I really have wanted to see this more into the prevalent Galio, but Bjergsen abuses it even harder than I thought he was going to be able to abuse it. Off of, off of just that first poison, chases him down. He fully stacked Conqueror, chasing Pobelter back through the lane and forces the double summoners. Absolutely insane. Bjergsen, let me just even talk further about him because while TSM have been up and down, Bjergsen has been so good for them, extremely consistent. He has the most solo kills of any player in the LCS right now um, on the team as well. And 
him with Cassiopeia having this good of a start, burning both summoners. Maybe with a jungler like Jarvan, you can even see some extra pressure coming through. I would definitely highly recommend it. Currently, no wards on the top side, so Bjergsen goes up to that side to make sure they get first vision, and that will give them some areas to try and uh, punish and threaten Poe Belter. Big wave building here as well. And a little bit of early damage down there as Broken Blade gonna fight over the top lane wave. Ruin, of course, counter picked into the matchup. Went Fleet Footwork to keep his move speed and sustain solid. Make sure you stay away from those pillars, not get knocked up. Right now, no ward control for either top laner anywhere near top side. Ruin steps down to remedy that right now as Spika with Bjergsen gonna go ahead and take bottom scuttle first. Bot lane is pushing very heavily. This is a matchup, by the way, where I wouldn't have minded seeing Spell Thieves for treats. You're probably going to get a lot of poke down. You want to keep the mana pull up so you can keep going for those shots. You're likely to hit turret a fair bit. Could have worked, but still goes for the more defensive option. Brom Ash can run you down. It's just a little bit less likely. Yeah, I'm I'm always fine with them going defensive when especially there's a mid lane Galio that you're facing. So you're like, okay, there's a decent chance we get some more members down here in the bottom side with you know, with Ash Brom set up, but I, I definitely feel you on you know trying to play offensively as well and and mine extra gold. Uh, good harassment goes out nonetheless. Yeah. The other part of it is the stat profile of the item is higher. It's a good 20 or so more ability power by mid to late game, but that can matter, right? It can be the difference between saving a teammate or not, or killing an enemy champion. Regardless, though, we have some looks towards top side as the Q is down for Broken Blade. His mana pool is a bit short, but Speak is here, mostly in case there's a gank. He's kind of on counter gank duty. He's sticking around. Another ward comes down for Ruin. Because, okay, well, with top pressure, I can get some reveals. I see you on Gromp. Can't really stop you, honestly. Red buff Graves, pretty threatening, so... Spend some time, says, all right, don't worry, you're safe, Phoebe. Shove in the wave. See you later. Yeah, it's uh, that 1v1 is pretty pretty hard for Jarvan because, especially with phase rest, Graves, he dodges the EQ. Unless you're, like, EQing out of Fog of War or something or you get a really nice one, uh, good surprise, the Graves is going to run circles around you and chase you down, punish you real hard on the exit. So you have to play off your laners here for the Jarvan. Uh, and the uh, main laner right now, obviously, Bjergsen being able to get his own early advantage. Spika trying to keep vision for him, but Wiggly's going to definitely pull further and further ahead in the farm since Spika's spending so much time just trying to track. He's been tracking Wiggly on Wiggly's side of the map where he's getting camps while Spika is falling pretty far behind in CS. This little trade right there. Brooklyn gets his mana pool back as he TPs back to lane. Gets shredded out by Ruin. Looks like this Nar wants to make the same kind of choice. Did a coal start on Nar. I actually like that in any low impact lane. Go ahead and rush a coal. Try not to build too many other starting items and just go into your real build from there. So Kindle Gem picked up. The build towards Black Cleaver. No surprises there. In the olden days, we saw things like Blade of the Ruin King and Rage Blade and Phantom Dancer. <laughs> That's probably not the option here. But Boots and a Kindle Gem is going to feel real good. Yeah, it's probably going to be a, a team fight angle for him and go for the big Nars onto Cassiopeia, get through the back line, kind of crack them with the Galio on top. TSM, though, Dragon Focus should be able to get yeah. it, no problem. They had mid lane pressure as well as bottom lane having a recall there for Counter Logic Gaming. And Spika's definitely going to be behind in the one versus one versus Graves, but you're not really trying to take those one versus ones as we mentioned before. He's trying to be a team enabler. What's amazing to me is actually TSM has the lowest first dragon rate in the LCS, despite being a team, especially well, any Devil of team, especially plays around bottom lane. And despite the fact that I would say he's been laning pretty well overall, you know, has solid gold lead, solid XP lead, he's a good laner. Uh, they've never been able to really pick up those objectives very often. This time around, though, they will get that one. A little bit of counter pressure right now for CLG as the Karmo sent back to base to pick up some more mana regen and scale up into this game. Boots of Speed picked up here as well. It might mean a recall can come before too terribly long. Upgraded boots for Stix A means he's going to wait around for a while. And ultimately, it's just double if last thing under turret. Yep. The farming era of Ezreal, where you get your tier, your cull, just trying to last hit, charge up your uh, mana item here, no problem. And wait to grow into the two core item. Real big carry. Yeah. Anytime you're able to use tier roughly on cooldown while keeping a mana pool up is really what you want. The faster you turn into Muramana, the better. That comes online around the same time as your Sheen upgrade. That's going to feel really good. And that is a power spike that's not always exactly gold gated, right? It's your ability to make sure you're using Q yeah. with, with decent timing and everything else. Top lane still a bit of a, you know, fun mode right here. For now, Broken Blade holds a farm lead with more minions even to kill. So really feeling good about this one, right? He hasn't really had any attention from either side. 
gets counterpicked and just farming up for now, which is nicely done. Yeah. What I want to see in the next two minutes here for CLG is some looks with the Galio. Pobelter's ready, you know. He's got his Summoner Spellbook switch over to Ignite. He's got Flash Ignite. This Galio is ready to kill. Level six, this is where you want to start seeing the force come through. Wiggly's already got the level lead on Graves that you're looking for with your Graves Jarvan matchup. Um, it, Spika does just tick six off that Gromp, though, so he's going to have a few more options uh, even if they do go for the invade, but the play is still the same. Uh, looking for the setup. Six A's got his Ash Arrow. You can get your stuns. Try and force a Galio play. I want to point out, speaking of Galio plays, he has Spellbook, his TP over to Ignite. His Flash is back up after losing at level one. Retains a seven CS deficit, which is not too bad for how catastrophic level one was. And we'll, uh, we might see the next play come around soon. Spika, though, has left bottom lane. There's nothing to be done down there. Ash Brom defensive enough. Uh, Tier Ezreal, not exactly a champ you want to gank for very often. So understandable there is... The cannon goes down, Pub gets blue, and, well, none of these lanes feel very gankable. Karma is well, probably the most attackable champion on the map, and eh, yeah, CLG's exactly. not going it's, for it. It's it's bottom lane, because you want to fight as CLG around a tier call Ezreal, right? That That's the area that you're looking to attack, plus your Ash is already there. Uh, if Wiggly can pick up this Rift Herald, then they can get some, some turret plate money and try and uh, force a bigger objective. But Fjergsen's heading over already on the Casio. And TSM have a stream of players they want to contest. Have more. Their support's going. Spellbook to TP. Smoothie will be here as well. 4v4 now for the Rift Herald. Spika's here. Smite fight's coming soon. How's it going to go? Picked up there by Spika. The early smite for Wiggly. Re-engage. Broken Blade wants something. Can't quite find it. Treat's going to pick that one up. And now Broken Blade going to be slowed down. Has public over to Ignite, can deal plenty of damage here. He's nearsighted, when does the ult come out? So far, no fight for TSM. Broken Blade gonna ult, gonna flash the wall, go for round two, gonna knock up Wiggly. Be careful, Graves! Has to flash back over, Broken Blade is safe, hitting the Blast Cone away. And Wiggly could not get enough done, loses his own flash for a play he wanted. TSM come away, trading summoners and getting the Rift Herald. Yeah, because of the early smite there, uh, Speak is able to get the second smite in. I believe I saw like 50 HP still left on yeah. it. TSM get the Rift Herald. They get Broken Blade out alive on top of it. Bjergsen there with the blue buff, Cassiopeia, did a lot of zoning on the bottom side of that Rift Herald exit, uh, keeping them at bay. And that allows them to easily continue stacking up these tiers. TSM are the ones with the double tier uh, kind of mid-game here, and it is going swimmingly for them. Looking good right now. So, let's look at the map yet again. TSM's small gold lead, winning in a lot of their lanes, to be honest. Mid's up a solid 20 with the wave crashing in. Pope won't get much of that one. Heal Ignite now on the Galio. We'll see if anything more comes out of that one. Mana Muna completed for Doublelift. He's going to feel comfortable. And next Drake is up in 15 seconds. One Cloud, one Mountain. Pings. If they can grab it. Pings down onto Pope Belter. A lot of damage here, doesn't have a good way out. Can burn summoners, hasn't burned any yet. Finally gets through one, doesn't matter. First blood comes through for Bjergsen. The rest of the squad showed up. They knock him down just in time for the Drake. That's what preparation does for you. Full vision control over the river. TSM right out of the side brush here. They even had the ward over the wall. You lay down Miasma on top of it, knock up, boom. It is first blood into the waiting arms of Cassiopeia, exactly where TSM want it. Freak, this. This game was already, uh, you know, going according to plan for TSM with easily being able to stack up. But with Dragon number two at only 11 and a half minutes on top of the extra money here for Bjergsen, preparation does all the work. Everybody's ready, so you get the knock up right into Miasma. He can go nowhere. You slowly try and walk out of it. Bjergsen even gets the double with his ultimate there. Side stun uh, over onto Ruin. And now that extra money with the kill, his Archangels is done. He will have Seraphs completed at a very quick pace in this game. And TSM's team fight is about to explode. Looking really good here. 500 gold lead, though, is only the difference right now. As we have yet to see that. Oh, that's going to be a jump right in. No way out for Pope. Once again, grounded. Sent back to his room. TSM 2-0 in the mid lane. Broken Blade might be the counter kill, though. He's got to run a long way. 
He's already ulted, he's already flashed, he's got nowhere else to go. Finds a slow, he's gonna charge away, and here comes Spika. Look for the knockup, the ult, he's gonna find the kill. Ruin is on the board, Spika is gonna jump away instead. No counter kill on the TSM side, so CLG back on the board, making the game a little bit closer. Bot lane is roaming up for CLG too. Do they continue this? Can he hit an arrow maybe? Bjergsen, no flash. Bjergsen's gonna be stunned, there's gonna be a lot of damage to flash forward. Braum gonna layer it, a double stun comes through, but it's not going to be enough. Shutdown goes through to Wiggly. Great room from the bottom lane of CLG to keep them in it here. Stixe and Smoothie double ultimates onto Bjergsen. They punish the flashless Cassiopeia. Ruin getting to push down there on turret plates as well. And they're right back to it. Well, second plate dropped in the bottom lane as double at least gets his farm going. Keeps the CS at plus two right now. Mikhail's coming in for treats. will feel really good considering Ash is in this game. But otherwise, we have a close game. Got to point that out. TSM may be up in Drake's. But those plates taken in mid lane, Treats got that gold. He was the Herald Summoner. So Karma with money means Mikhail's is done. That's not bad, but it's still not a hyperscaling Ezreal or Cassiopeia. Definitely true. Couple more, seven more kills here for the Cold Pop for Ezreal as well. And Double Lift should feel pretty good building armor. Um, only Galio magic damage to worry about and the super tiny amount from Nar. So he should be able to build pretty safely for themselves. And you already mentioned the Mikhails. Love it uh, as far as getting them out of those pick situations and allowing TSM a lot more agency in choosing their fight. Well, next fight might be chosen in two and a half minutes as we have the Infernal Drake spawning. Infernal Rift is here. Infernal Soul is coming. TSM so far have held all the cards on that side of the map. A bit more turret pressure as the plates drop. We have a pretty much tied game between these two teams. It's going to be Scuttle taken. It won't be terribly important. It's not going to be alive during the Drake fight, but we know that's going to be the next objective to fight over as Baron won't be up. Scuttle, or Herald, I should say, not terribly meaningful either. Got to reward those smoothie in the front line. Jumps back out. Spika not going to find the re-engages yet. There we go. Double knockup means there's going to be a fight coming in. But look at the health bar just evaporate. You took that fight and died for it. Broken Blade TP's in. Now over the wall towards Treats, forcing him to flash away to stay alive. Double lift is around, finds a bunch of damage. Wiggly's got to be careful. Does he have the ult? He does. But the shield is up for Smoothie. Knock up for Broken Blade. The Orn is here and the kill comes in. Goodbye to the support. And a re-engage now. Ruin is on the wrong side of this fight. Two autos will kill him. Double lift finds the kill as Broken Blade claps him with the hammer. And TSM find a fight very close between the two teams. CLG should have taken that win and walked away with it. They punished Spika so hard for over-aggression there, and yet then they walk into the jungle. TSM, really nice closure there as Bjergsen runs over. Broken Blade also comes in, and they hit the CC. Extra kill, plus now they get tower damage for themselves. Pretty big clap back. Really big stuff right there. You can see TSM up 1,000 gold solidly. Recall's coming in soon. Bjergs no big finishes Riley's or Leandri's in time for that fight as we look at it again. So again, Galio Ultimate, CLG are itching to use it. That's why they're picking this fight. They're like, great, all right, we got this. Speak even takes the bait right in on it. And then Wiggly blows them up before the Galio ult even arrives and both teleports are down. Then CLG try and get treats here, but his flash had come back up. It was pretty close and had just come back up. So that's probably why they went for it. Um, Smoothie does block double lifts ultimate, but Broken Blade and Bjergsen had both already roamed over. And once the solo laners got there for TSM, they can scatter CLG. Wiggly had really, really wanted to get that kill on the treats and yep. was trying to get, uh, again, the uh, punish on the Karma Flash, but um, the, the timer had just come up for him and treats right out of there. And if it wasn't for those two flashes being up, that would have been four kills, not two. Both Wiggly and Pobolt are barely flashed away with under 100 or under 500 health, I should say, to survive that encounter. Now they are here. Spellbook back the two new summoners on Pobes' side. Can this fight work for CLG? Only a thousand gold difference. Still fairly close. Mountain Drake not going to be gigantic for the stat bonus, so certainly winnable. Is this going to be the re-engage? CLG fighting over this Infernal Drake. When does TSM go in? Broken Blade just gets ulti, pops it instantly, goes towards Ruin. They find the knockout. They find a lot of damage, but Drake is picked up, and Ruin is crucially alive. Mid turret may fall, but it's going to anyway. That is a Drake picked up. CLG feeling confident in the bottom river. Oh, yeah, they're real happy about that. They're able to you know, put a stop to the dragon stacking of TSM, and uh, pretty easy for Ruin to hop away from it. That mid tower was going to go down anyway, so TSM toppling it isn't like a big trade. Uh, Rift Trail is going to be traded for the bottom side tower, though, as Stixay and Smoothie worked that one down.
Beautiful stuff right there. So a turret trade. It's going to be one to one in that score line. However, no one is answering top lane for double. If he is acquiring a lot of farm, he's prioritizing getting to his spots on the map and knocking these things down. Stixay is rivaling him in CS, to be fair. But you're seeing across the board CLG dropping behind their opponents. Ruin, to be fair, has a lead. But mid lane is 30 CS apart. That is an unanswered deficit here on the CLG side. That may be a problem as Bjergsen is farming quite well. Yeah, Bjergsen definitely been playing super well. For double lift two, you're talking about uh, people being unable to answer him. He, like I said earlier, can easily itemize the armor that Ezreal likes to do with his, with his Iceborne and doesn't have to worry about too much of the magic damage, just a an underfed Galio there from the mid lane. And he has a pretty easy time of trying to evade some of the engage here, especially since there is a Mikhail's on the team. So Doublelift should be able to navigate these fights very, very well. And then you keep your eyes on Bjergsen because that's gonna be the big powerhouse for dumping out a lot of the AP threat for TSM later on. And it's up to CLG. You know, mainly Ruin um, to, to get in there and get a good placement for Poe Belter's Galio ult. If you can get your Gnar combination with your Galio ult working um, as set up by an Ash Arrow, Ooh. that's your ideal situation. CLG want to punish Bjerg. Proto Belt forward into the taunt, into all the damage they should need. They juke the stun, he goes the wrong way. Poe Belter Big. sets it up and Wiggly knocks it down for his third kill. Huge pick for CLG there. Good job sending all their resources up on the top side because TSM can't get anything else back on the map. Look at that. Their mid tower's already gone down, so it's just a wave shoved in. It's going to be wave traded as TSM try and push that towards Stixe. And the only area for TSM to attack would be trying to dive bottom side. Ruin already backing off of the turret. So CLG get their kill onto Cassiopeia. They put a stop to the Cassiopeia farming for now. Uh, as he can't increase the numbers for a little bit and are happy to take that topside objective. So again, it'll be a turret trade here, but a kill on the board for CLG means the gold gets ever closer. 1,400 gold apart right now as Bjergsen's Reign of Terror is cut a little bit short. Only two and two, not the most impressive KDA. These teams very close in overall scoreboard. Kills equal, turrets went apart, Drake's went apart. CLG, I would say, punching above what their weight has been so far in this LCS split. Five and eight going hand, uh, kind of, what, toe-to-toe uh, -to -toe with an eight. <laughs> there we hand go. Hand-to-toe. Hand-to-hand. to mouth Hand-to-toe. <laughs> Cartwheels all over the place. We got there. Uh, honestly, uh, again, we, we really still need to see, you know, minimum 45 left on this dragon. Uh, looking for how they're going to execute with this Gnar because the Gnar for the team fighting, the last pick, well, Bjergsen actually looking for Ruin himself. He's about to transform back into Mini, too. Gets the stun, Ruin's at 1,000 health, finds a stun, finds some damage, jumps around, tries to get away, gets the flash, the slow from Treats, and it isn't enough to kill. So Ruin lives, trading his flash for his life. Yeah, a couple of ults here used by TSM, but they're happy to trade those out for the flash from Nar. I was just trying to talk about Nar in teamfights. Guess what, Freak? Without flash, my whole story kind of comes crashing down because <laughs> it is so much easier to deal with non-flash Nar when you have Cassiopeia Miasma you can lay down. Orn already going to have a good frontline with the long-range engage, and uh, you have to worry about Jarvan going through. With, without those, you know, without that flash for, for Ruin, it's so much more difficult. Oh, arrow hit, Throw though. Lands four versus one. He's got a flash, but he does not have ways out of this one. CLG set a trap on the top river as the top winner comes down. That is a nice death brush, but it means mid is under fire. Speak up plus the Herald. Get a lot of damage in. He can't quite stay, but it's enough to knock down the turret. TSM also finding counter punches in this game. Continuing with the body parts, it's an eye for an eye, Freak. Pick for a pick. <laughs> CLG get one back for themselves with the Ash Arrow, and they actually capitalize on the kill, even though TSM take down the turret. You know, I got to say, this is an improvement, right? Because a week ago, TSM traded their jungler for a ward. This time, they trade their top laner for a turret. Clearly, they value Broken Blade, or at least have ah. learned to trade up. <laughs> Regardless, it is a good move, and TSM have river control. They are on this Drake. It's number three for them, and CLG are not yet in range to fight for. It would be a blind steal, and it's not going to happen. Well played, TSM. Back on the map, 1,000 gold difference, and they're on soul point. All right, let's see if a reset here for... Oh, that's the summer spell book. Um, means anything at all for them. Good deep wards, too, leading up to it. You can see TSM preparing a lot more for this one. 
through the red jungle, had the vision, and just burn it down. They even use a teleport for good measure uh, for a broken blade off the summoner spell book. Definitely a worthwhile investment. Yeah, agreed. It's really good stuff. Gets nerfed next gonna... week, so we'll see less of that next time around. Now, Stick Say will be able to flash it. Uh, the lineup there for Broken Blade was such that going in a straight line plus pressing F was going to be good enough. Pressing D, it would be questionable. You know, but Stick Say has the summoners on the right keys, so that's a big brain AD carry there. Baron is on the map. Four minutes until the Soul Drake spawns. Is there even another opportunity before that? I, I don't see TSM uh, needing to be the ones to force anything on CLG. They can easily just wait for said Dragon Soul. So I'm looking at CLG in that case for the, you know, the arrow combination, the pick that we're looking for. We just saw it last time around. They did get one on the Broken Blade, but uh, they're going to have to continue to do their work clearing out the vision to try and find another one, set themselves up for a better dragon fight this time around. I'm very curious how it's going to look. And also, I'm interested to see what Ruin can do for himself. You talk about, you know, what openings are there, what else can be done in the next three minutes or so. Mm -hmm. It is Ruin going split push heavy, right? It is Ruin King's second item. He is trying to be able to, to fight Broken Blade. What it means is that Bjergsen has to be the one to answer Gnar. I don't think this build from Gnar ever beats Cassio in the 1v1, unless you get jungle help and you, you get a CC chain going. It means he claps Broken Blade 1v1, and that means that he's got to kind of dodge that matchup. But otherwise, it's just a squishier front line. Yeah, and, and especially without the Flash too, like, it's it's going to be really dangerous for Ruin when you do get to that team fight. So maybe CLG do commit a little bit harder to the split push that you're you're trying to talk about. It's it's definitely difficult, though, uh, as, as they don't have any sort of deep vision to push up with confidence or ability to choose that 1v1. So TSM forced the issue here, clearing out all the vision around Baron. And good toggle of vision means that... Uh, they're going to have to be in the dark for a little bit longer, even though I believe they are the ones that had the Scuttle Crab. Just gave them a little bit of uh, lasting intel. After they push that last minion wave in with Ruin, he's going to head on over. Uh, flash timer still a little bit far out for them, so they're happy to continue farming. And speaking of farming, 50 CS lead for Wiggly, up three levels over Speaker right now. And that might be really important because we know this Drake fights in just two minutes. And a smite is important. Gets another 100 or so damage on the smite as a result of those three levels. Watch for that when you can see the gold difference between the two, about 2,000. So TSM are up 1,000 gold, but the jungler is up 2k on the other side. The other lanes are farther ahead. You're seeing that largely in bot and mid. About 2k for Doublelift, 1,500 almost for Bjergsen. That's where the difference really, really lies, and that's what we're going to look at here. Interesting that Doublelift is kind of between two items. Uh, has gone ahead and finished Blade of the Ruin King, but just has the Warhammer waiting around for some extra CDR. He is max cooldown now. And we'll see Freak. if that can be enough for him. It, it pains me so much when I always see these vision trades. TSM just invested so much in laying down all that vision around Baron. Then they exit the area, CLG move in. They clear out all the vision. Now CLG fully exit the area. TSM move in. They get to clear out all these control wards. It's this, this investment in control wards. Well, Ruin, he's collapsed upon. 3v1 top side, here comes double for the wall. Ruin does his very best. You can see that he's supposed to win those fights, but the rest of the squad is here. His ult means nothing, and it's going to be the three-man kill as double is on the scoreboard. The respawn will be in time for the Drake yeah. fight, but it does mean River Control is there if they want it. Plus, it means they need a deeper ward for him to teleport on. CLG, knowing all the resources are topside, they should be making a beeline for Dragon right now to place teleport wards for that Gnar. Prep your dragon fight for your Gnar flank. If he can get the teleport, his flash will be available when he becomes alive once again. And that could be their opportunity to strike. TSM, good pick for them uh, for the extra little bit of gold. But the uh, triple item power spikes are starting to come in and they're teleporting back out for early yep. vision control. Okay, the squad is here and it's time to fight over the Drake. Dragon Soul is find? on the board for TSM. CLG claimed one, but now they must claim this as well. TSM off a small gold lead. an ult is down for about 10 more seconds, but I don't know if CLG knows that's their window. Mininar for Ruin is going to be a similar timer here. He doesn't have any engaged tools himself. Knocks down a ward, but not a great flanker on Mininar. 
Bit of poke back and forth. Stun on double lift. He stepped too far up, but he burns the summoners. He gets away. The flash in smoothie. Puts him at one hit from dead. The re-engage towards Broken Blade. The Drake loses him out. Pope Arthur is on the flank. Here comes the play. Is it going to be enough? Wiggly knocked into the air. When does Pope go in? When does Ruin go in? He's got Flash. They can take a team fight, but all they care about is the Drake. All they care about is pushing away the opposing jungler. They secure the Drake. I question the killer instinct to not go for more. At the end of the day, though, CLG get what they need and walk away. That's, uh, I gotta clean my glasses here. How did Double Lift end up so close as the Ezreal? He barely gets away with Arcane Shift Flash. Broken Blade actually the target for a Ruin. He wants to make that Blade of the Ruin King work. Seems winnable. No ult for Broken Blade. Does have Flash if he needs it. Finally burns it. Gets away with a thousand health. And that is what you expect out of the matchup. Finally some tank out of swing through for Ruin as he uh, builds up some MR. And CLG can push through bottom side. In the end, it is uh, definitely the delay that CLG were looking for. Can they punish Wiggly going for the Gromp? Oh, that is big. He old. It's not going to get over the wall. He's got to be careful. But here comes the squad. Here comes the re-engage. A double stun into the wall and a shutdown onto the summonerless double lift. And that is Mika forced to run away. Pope wants more. He can't catch treats, though. Bot lane could be under fire. Pobelter wants the flank play. He's got flash. He's got every tool available. This wave is gone. The turret the same. It was all a bait freak. Wiggly's laughing now. <laughs> right into my Nar Galio combo. As DSM thought they caught him out there. And the solo laners protect their jungler. This is CLG's first big advantage in this game. They take down that tower. They get the mid one as well. And now you start to see their vision blooming through the jungle. What a big turning point. And it comes at Wiggly inside trying to steal away the Gromp, then, you know, kind of dashing over towards the wall. Haha, ha, look, I don't have any more escapes. But Pobelter's right there, has his back. They get the Nar stun and the Galio knockup. All right, Boots 2 is Ninja Tabby here for Wiggly. Of course, the three-level lead, the Death Stance being done. That's what helped keep him alive in that prior fight. You have to expect Baron is the likely objective to be played for next. Up in three minutes, COG feeling more comfortable around the map. Right now, TSM does own ward control. They are the ones who take over the river, who take over part of CLG's jungle. You see three control wards on your screen right now. And the regular invisible ones only spot double if last hitting minions, which doesn't mean all that much on CLG's side. TSM waiting for a play. Can they find an opening? Does someone overstep? Double if trying to bait them. Not going to find it here. Hawkshot reveals the bait and says, no, 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 no. There's people over there. Let's not get that one to happen. Broken Blade in the bottom side of the map. TP is down. Walks over to contest. All right, CLG need to be very careful with their Hawk Shot usage because you do have to start to worry about three item Cassiopeia burning through Baron. TSM can pull some sneaky plays here, even if they're showing multiple people and you're like, oh, they see double lift. Oh, they see X person in lane. TSM have the capability to two person burn down a Baron if it's left unattended, if they lose sight of vision. So that control ward that they just went to place, uh, Poe Belter trying to get some vision now and then working off your Hawk Shot timers. Pope is nearly a target, but there's enough re-engage. There's enough delay that they will find some damage here under the jungler. Speak of very tanky, though. Has stone plate and a Knight's Vow. A slow on Broken Blade means he ease backwards. Blast Cone is there, but they can't get the entire team until it takes forever. So Broken Blade will be left alone. The Gnar comes in! Oh. Galio over the top! They found one, but the rest of the team gets out. The re-engage Spika will lock them up, but he will still get knocked down as Tixay is on the board. Top and jungle are dead. 5v3, time to play for Baron. The Oathies are up. Bjergsen has what he needs. Is it going to be the fight that turns it around? Ruin is so terribly low, has to jump out of the pit. And that means CLG, with the threat of Cassiopeia, cannot go for Baron. They will kill some chickens. They will knock down the mid lane wave, but they will only get two kills. Again in the jungle, Freak. CLG find the combination. This one. They started out, they're just trying to chase down whatever frontline member they can get their hands on. Uh, you know, first stun obviously onto Spika, double if then over the wall has to arcane shift away and they get the knockups onto Broken Blade. But Ruin jumps in, gets the Mega Nar against the back line. They even zone out Bjergsen for a long time with the Gallia ultimate coming down too. And then Spika has to sacrifice his life. He traps everybody inside the Cataclysm, then EQs out. You know where for him to really EQ out uh, as he dies on the exit anyway, but does allow Doublelift and Bjergsen to still remain upright for TSM. And with those two carries, too much damage from Baron since Ruin turned back into mini form and they were eating a lot of damage from the spikes.
Well, Double Knight's Vow in for TSM, so a lot of extra armor on those champions. They heal as Bjergsen and Double Lift deal damage, and they make sure those champions stay alive. Broken Blade is indeed bound to Double Lift there. He's going to start upgrading some items as well. Level 16 on the Orn. Gets treats this time around. And here we go. Dragon Soul again. It's up in five seconds. TSM, if they get this smite, they get Dragon Soul. They're probably favored to win the game. Ruin is top awesome. lane, yet to TP in. Turret Nar down. Still your TP. Yeah, Nar has TP, but he just went mini, so he's exhausted. He can't gain range for rage for a long time. And with mini form Blade. Nar teleporting in, that's this nothing. This is late. He's got a smite steal and he can't do it. Broken Blade claims it. Spellbooks to smite, I'm pretty sure. And Wickley is just going to drop. He's taking the damage. They will finally burn him down. The re-engage is not going to matter. TSM get the soul. They get two kills. They get a crucial dunk from Spica. And it's already four slaughtered. It's Ruin running away. He was late to the fight and he is late to die. Baron is on the map and CLG, where was your top laner? The timer's on the scoreboard the entire time. And TSM get everything they ever wanted. Freak, when Nar goes mini, can't gain rage thereafter. And even when he comes in, it's a mini Nar, so the timing expertly forced there by TSM. They can see Ruin in the top side on those minions. They know they have this timing window to force. They can just burn. They see him transform back into mini. They're not afraid of the stun coming through. Teleport from Broken Blade. They still see Ruin, Freak. Ruin is in danger right now. He's got nowhere to go. He's got teammates alive, but it's not going to matter. Ruin will die at a very awkward time for a full minute now. TSM have a lot of room to work with. Baron buff on, gold to put into their pockets. This is always one of the big things when playing around Nar is playing around that rage bar. And they you can tell they didn't really want to teleport in. Wiggly just splashes in to try and get the steal. I like the call if you just go for the steal. But everybody has to be on the same page that, hey, you know, we, we can't really fight this. We don't have Ruin's Mega Farm. And, and, you know, that's what's, what's been winning us these fights. But they don't do that. They make kind of a halfway call where they go for the steal and then the fight after with Pobelt to trying to use a Galio ultimate inside Dragon Pit for them. And with the late arrival, with it just being a mini form also, TSM are so happy to clean that up. I mean, it's it's very smart by them in the first place to force um, immediately on that Dragon and they sure. see Ruin in mini form split pushing like that. Um, but, and it, I know it feels so bad to, to give up a soul, but I think you just make the call, hey, we go for the steal. If we don't get it, everybody else out because you're not going to win. Well, double lift a bit far forward. Galio over the top. Is there a re-engage? No stuns to be had as he kites away. Redemption gets the health bar back up, and here comes the way back in. Smoothie gets knocked down by the Ornhorn. Pobelter drops here as well, and again, the team is stuck inside the Sandcastle. Goodbye to Stixay <laughs> and TSM just like that. Find two team fights, and they are right into the base. Yep, that is Infernal Soul. That is Elder. Or, excuse me, that is Baron, and that is the game, Freak. TSM will take it. They will improve to nine wins. They're going to stay on that hunt for a top two spot with four games to play. They got some room to make up, but they will certainly knock down CLG. They will take the Nexus, and Migley will try to run away, but he will help the TSM KDAs. A squad <laughs> of dabbing penguins. TSM take the win. Love the coordination at the end as well. Definitely touch and go there for a long time in this game. You know, some team fights won here, some team fights won there, some big combinations at the end. Um, but again, that's the thing about Nar. He's not as reliable as so many of the other frontline tanks. You can't just make the call um, like it's a switch. You have to play around the rage bar, yep. and the timings do not work out for them this time around. Yeah, would have liked to see them pick a more coordinated option. I understand you can't always team fight it, so make a choice. Either stay top lane and go in Hib, or TP in time to fight for it as it stood out. He was still TPing when the Drake was already gone, and that is ultimately a miscommunication. That is a failing somewhere down the line of Sealed, you not to catch that one. Regardless, though, I do want to give props. TSM did play it well. They said, okay, let's try again. We see not on top. We've swept most of the wards. Hey, he's mini. Let's for sure take this. They had the smites come down. Well played. They deserve the win. TSM improved. I think it's now 9-5, and five, their record. That playoff hunt is going strong. With four to play, they're getting real close to guaranteeing the playoffs, and that's looking pretty solid for them. Now, we're going to go for a quick break, but when we come back, we've got the Verizon Post game interview with these in the jungler speak of. Look forward, hit the gas, focus on the road before you. The Honda Civic. 
with standard Honda Sensei. It's fun, always. Hello, welcome. I'm here with the Verizon post game interview with TSM Speaker. Speaker, you told me that game was stressful, man. Why was it so stressful? Mm -hmm. It seemed like a dub to me. Yeah, I think our mid game was kind of messy. We had a lot of split calls, and it just makes the game very difficult overall. I think we could have definitely played any... a lot better. Is, is there any particular reason why uh, the calls were split? Are you kind of adjusting to the team makeup mm -hmm. being a bit different, or was it just the kind of game that was just hard to call in? I think the main issue is that this is not really draft we practice a lot. I think um, Bjerg, I don't think he has ever played Cassio in scrims before. Like, this is his first time on stage. I probably played, like, two games with Draven in scrims, so it's, like, a really new comp for us to execute. So that's why we were having, like, difficulties in the mid-game. Makes sense, but obviously both champions are very uh, comfortable on. We kind of happy to be back on Draven. Like like you said, it's a champion that used to get to play that often, but obviously one you, you know pretty yeah. well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've played Java a lot of times. I think last play in Academy as well, that was one of my main champs. So I'm pretty comfortable playing the champ, so I think that wasn't that bad. And then speaking of Academy, of course, Treats has now joined the team. Uh, you, that's something you've actually played with for quite a while now. What has it been like playing with your old Academy teammate? Is, uh, is there any inbuilt synergy there or any inbuilt friendship? Is it easier you know, playing with a player that you have played with for, for quite a bit, even on a different team? Yeah, well, I mean, there's definitely existing synergies. We play, like, for two splits in Academy, but I think since it's a new player coming to a new team, like, middle of the split, we have a lot to adjust. We had a lot of issues early on, but I think we're, like, slowly fixing those problems, and we're just getting better every every day. 
And then speaking of, you have a very big test coming up next weekend Mm -hmm. to get that all into practice. You're playing Cloud9, and of course, the fearsome Blabber will be on the other side of the Mm -hmm. rift from you in your position. What are your thoughts on that upcoming matchup? Um, I mean, I think it's just going to be a banger. That's all I can say. (laughs) Well, I'm certainly looking forward to it, Speaker. Congrats on the win, and thanks so much for joining me. All right. Thank you for having me. All right. With that, we are going to send it back to the State Farm Analyst Desk. Thank you very much, Pastry Time. Uh, TSM picking up the victory, promising a banger game next week against Cloud9. So that excites me. Cloud9 will come back with a vengeance, I'm sure, after falling short this week. But let's talk about the victory crafted by TSM against CLG here. Actually, both sides of the coin. Because I'll be honest, in pregame, we had a lot of choice words and some criticisms for certain individuals on both sides of the rift. Uh, In particular, we were looking at those junglers, probably. Yeah, um... Wiggly was someone I'm um, like really skeptical about this split. I don't think he's been performing very well. And on the other side, Pobelter for CLG has been playing so well. So when I saw this draft come out where they took Graves and Galio in 2-3, I was like, well, I guess they really believe in Wiggly. There's something going on behind the scenes where they this guy's able to perform and they're comfortable giving him draft resources. And this is also a game where Azir is open, where Pobelter being such a big carry for them, I'm surprised they didn't take it. So I did like that. TSM got the karma for the trade of ash so i like tsm's draft i like clg's draft i i kind of liked where uh where this was going uh crumbs what about what about your opinions uh on the way that each of these junglers was set up because uh, what's what's interesting to me is that we had talked about you know the the carry performances of speaker you know of the past and how this time he kind of got relegated to jarvin flip side wiggly he gets the Graves, where we would have more put hit, you know, thought of him on a Sejuani's, and he pops off even in the loss. Yeah, I think Wiggly had a strongish Graves. Now he had a good scoreline, but the objective game wasn't there, and mechanically there were a lot of blunders. One of them looked like a a bait where the team bailed him out at the end of the day. But the mistakes that plague CLG seem to be transcending their compositions. They're still late for dragons. They're still falling behind in that regard. And that's really what cost them the game at the end of the day, having to flash and to try to get a steal when everything had been somewhat going your way should not be the position that you're in. And for someone like Spika, I think his interview was really insightful. Not a comp they'd been playing, hadn't been playing a lot of Jarvan, and even Bjergsen not playing a lot of Cassiopeia. So a lot of experimentation out of them in this match. Bjergsen, Cassiopeia, let's talk about it, Mark. Uh, you know, in this game, or rather leading into it, we talked about identity for yeah. TSM. Who do they play around? It's got to be Bjergsen, so I, I like this. And this is the same setup that C9 tried to play once with the J4 uh, Cassio into Galio. And you see it comboing really well there. The Miasma can be used to stop his E, as well as the Jarvan ult. You can just E, Q, R into lane, and now he can't get out. And it's, Where it's, are you going, man? Yeah, it's super easy to kind of combo for kills. And they actually do this a lot better, and this is what... TSM's playstyle often was when Bjergsen was at his best. It was like, hey, jungler, come mid and blow flash for flash, and then we'll punish and repeat gank. And those two ganks happen just a minute apart. And so I do like this a little bit more. I'm not saying they need to put Spika, you know, on the leash and play around Bjergsen 24-7, but I, I do like it more, uh, you know, when Bjergsen is a, a focal point for the team's carry potential. If it works, it works. If it works, I'll say Camp Yerickson 24-7. <laughs> yeah. Let's go, right? Uh, but, of course, the game did not end until this Drake fight. Uh, C- CLG, having won the most recent one, made this look like it could be close. But TSM will get the secure on the Drake and the game. Uh, I mean, this is not a real team fight because CLG takes so long to set up. Ruin doesn't TP in for a long time. and They have a Grave, so you don't have a jungler who's comfortable walking up and you know, contesting the dragon. Wiggly has to flash in to be close to smite range. And at that point, like, you're not going to win a team fight if your Graves is frontlining and taking all the damage. Like, you, you need the Gnar to have Mega Form, or he needs to at least be splitting the team apart by poking in the back. So the way this, like, team fight was, is mostly, like, Wiggly's going for the steal. The team wanted to fight, but didn't realize you're going to lose if your jungler is playing Graves and has to, you know, flash into the pit to try to steal. Yeah, it, it, it almost stings even more because the fight that immediately preceded that one up in the top lane felt like a winnable fight, a hard winnable fight for CLG. A blast cone would ultimately be the savior for TSM, at least three members of TSM, uh, to get out of that situation. And so for CLG, I think there will be a little bit of a sting coming out of this week, having been so close uh, to taking this win and maybe turning their split around.
Uh, with that, I think it's important to recognize, as you mentioned, Crumbs, looking at that Speak interview, that TSM is not satisfied. I'll just throw this to you as well. Treats just tweeted out, don't think we executed fights well in this game. Felt hard to lose the game considering the Dragon situation and scaling, but we should have had better fights to make it cleaner. So it appears that TSM by all accounts is not satisfied even with the way that they won. And they're looking they're looking at those two above them, C9 and TL, as teams they want to chase. Any final thoughts on this matchup, Crumbs? Well, it's good that TSM can fall back on the Dragons against a team like CLG and still feel like the game is not losable because against other teams that are going to be cleaner in that Dragon execution, say like even Dignitas today, they're going to be in a really tough situation if they're not able to execute the composition and have those mixed calls in the mid game because there's teams at the back that are gunning for those spots. Hard fought on both sides of the coin, but TSM comes out on top this time around. We got one more game after the break as we go. A reminder that the refreshed Lull Esports is your home for global LOL competition. Check out the return of the Penta and other content to keep you up to speed on all things competitive league. Lane X Lane too. you a gift so you can fight properly. Red Bull. Oh! How nice. Of you. But also rather stupid. Hmm. Mine. Mine. No, mine. No, mine. 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 Uh -oh. mine. <laughs> Red Bull gives you wings.